get going. Making another plan explain today, this time playing some 500 zone on Bodo. Um, for those of you who have never played this pool before, um, or on this site before, uh, it's all anonymous, so um, there's no HUDs, don't, don't get any like previous history from these players. Um, and then in addition to that, in the zone pool, you only have 15 seconds to act on every street, there's no time bank, so um, things can go pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to do my best to talk through all my decisions, um, and I'll try and make it short just because we'll probably move on to the next hand very quickly, but um, yeah, anyway, on the right, defend pocket aids, standard defend, face small bet, um, pretty easy call. Pretty good turn card for us. We'll have jack eight that our, our opponent probably won't open from this position. Um, we'll have six eight suited pure that our opponent, you know, won't have either. Um, and then obviously we'll, you know, have a lot of two pair and basically a lot of connectivity to the nine. Um, and on the river, I'm um, gonna use a small over bet. I unblock all the pairs, which is really nice. Um, because it means, you know, my opponent has more calling hands. So if I had a hand like ace eight, for instance, um, I might want to use a smaller size if I'm going to bet the river because you know, I block a lot of the strong hands that my opponent can call with. But when I have an eight, or uh, when I pocket eight specifically and I unblock all the pairs, I think a uh, big size makes the most sense. Um, ace three, I'll throw it in there just for the video. And eights again, defend three bet, button more small blind, pretty standard. Couldn't think of a worse flop. Um, okay, this didn't work out on the left. I'm gonna still call my eights here, but I'm not loving it. So I think eights, I'm just gonna check. But if I had, you know, worse under pairs, deuces through fours. Maybe even sixes. I think starting a bluff on the turn is a reasonable strategy. I'm gonna show down now and hope my opponent somehow has like seven six or something. Um, oh, same hand, nice. Yeah, I think we're just slightly too strong to start bluffing there. Um, might be a board that's so bad for us though that we just can fold some pairs on the flop, but. If that's the case, maybe it starts bluffing. Anyway, sevens, small bet, easy call. I think this hand just folds to the turn barrel. Block bluffs, can't improve well, don't block any value. Um, think. Small value bet's not unreasonable. He has all the worst under pairs. He has four X, ace highs. Um, and then we lose less against a hand like that. So obviously if I check there, he should bet like, you know, minimum half pot, but probably, you know, quite a bit larger with his hand, at least three quarters, I would say. Um, but by betting quarter pot myself, I have the opportunity to get called by worse. So I get some value with my hand um, and then also lose less to like the middling portion of his value range. Um, on the left, just gonna check call. Can maybe check raise sometimes, would strongly prefer a diamond though. Um, kind of the same situation here. I think like my hand's strong enough to value it. Don't know if people are good enough to, you know, raise hands like ace 10. Um, whereas if I check, Obviously, he's going to check back a lot of the hands, sorry, all the hands that uh, that I beat, um, and also value a bit bigger with his ace x, so I kind of you know, lose on both uh, sides of the coin. I think 10-4 deuce is disconnected enough where I can just kind of bet high frequency for small size. Um, obviously flush complete is not amazing, but we do have a gut shot. I think it's nice in this spot to barrel um, some gut shots because you don't have enough equity where you care that much if you get um, check raised. Um, and then, but you still have some equity to improve against your opponent's calling range. And then also um, it gives you some, some bluffs when the fourth uh, 
in a rare card to club, so like this exact situation, if I only barreled hands that have a club in them, now on the river I would, my entire range here would be flushes and therefore I would have no bluffs, but now it gives me an opportunity to, to have a triple barrel bluff um, that I wouldn't otherwise have if I, you know, didn't put hands like this in my turn betting range. Um, on the left, we defend Bonner's line, he checks. I think this hand is slightly too weak to start stabbing, like, not enough going on. Two undercards, bad backdoors. Um, and yeah, obviously, he had, he had a flush, that's fine. Uh, just facing the block with my shitty open ender, I guess I will call. I'm gonna use a big size here. Like, I'm not repping a ton, but I will still have some strong hands in that line. Like, I'll have River 2 pair, I'll have some flushes, um, and I wanna use, you know, blockers that mimic my. Or, like, when I had a diamond and an 8 there, so I block straights and flushes. So, when that's the case, I use big size, and then when I have shitty, shitty blockers, um, I'll put that in a smaller block size. Uh, just gonna small bet everything on the left. Um, on the right, he made it so small that I'm just going to peel creep up and obviously fold. Facing half pop with no equity. Um, Jax, see that small, turn these clubs, easy check back. And on the right, fold. So, Jax is interesting. Like my hand, he should value bet a lot of his king x, if not all of it. So I'm just gonna bet myself and hope to get called by some like ace highs or whatever. Um, the one spot about this is, or the one annoying thing about this spot is, I think some people overprotect their checking range on the river, like they don't value bet thin enough with king x, and so you can kind of value on yourself a little bit sometimes. But I think he should have enough, like you know, worst pocket pairs and. and Needs to call some ace high as well to make checks. So, I think very clear value bet there. So, on the right, this board's so good for us. I think we can just bet one third. On the left, he's equal full to the four bet. Gonna mix three bet and call with the king queen. This time we'll three bet. I go a bit bigger with my three bet sizing from the big blind than I do from the small blind, just because we're a bit more polar. Um, and there's no one left to act after us, so to four bet us and deny us equity, uh, or to cold four bet, cold four bet us rather. Um, on this type of texture, I like to start with half pot. I don't have the best suits, but um, they become pretty good for the turn. So like he's gonna flip flop obviously with club hands and heart hands. Um, I don't have any hearts, so I unblock his call flop full turn. So I'm gonna keep barreling this combo. We have two over cards, have good uh, blockers to 10x, good unblockers to his call flop uh, full turn range. And now unblocking clubs, um, which are gonna auto fold the river. I think we have a pretty clear value, or sorry, not value, pretty clear, clear bluff jam. Um, yeah, it's a top pair, so it seems fine to call down, but I think I'm fine with my, uh, my triple. Start with a small bet on 833. Again, people often don't check raise enough out of the big blind, um, especially in spots like that where. They have to use a lot of kind of unintuitive combos or just like complete airball combos or whatever.
10, easy defend, nice flop. I'm just gonna call, can mix raise in call. These uh, flush boards generally should play fairly passively, like you don't wanna have a huge check raise frequency, but he also shouldn't have like a very high betting frequency, so it's a bit weird. Um, when he does this on the turn, I am gonna check raise. I don't think he would play anything that beats me um, like this. I think they would all bet bigger, so. I think I just have the best hand most of the time now. And typically you want to use a large size when you're check raising turn because you're so poor. I think that's going to happen a lot for what it's worth. Um, Queen's just gonna pure jam, small blinders button. Little slow play hands like aces and um, call jack sometimes, it's a bit weaker. But I think Queen and Kings just always send it. Easy to defend with King 10 off. Obviously, a good flop. Raising a check, just gonna start betting. I usually just use block as an imposition player. Um, I know some textures prefer using a big size. This is probably one of them, because um, you're a bit more polar on average, but I think it works um, fairly well, sticking to the small size. Um, on the turn now, we're gonna be pretty polar here. We're only gonna be betting strong top pair or better. So I'm gonna use very large size. And the plan was to jam the river. On the left, um, I think we can bet sometimes, but don't really want to get raised with this hand, so just gonna check, uncomfortably check call, beat all of his bluffs, um, can improve quite easily, can turn top pairs, can turn straight draws, flush draws, etc. Uh, obviously, really, really bad turn for us. Just gonna check full. Jack's blinders blind, um, just strong enough to always four bet and call it off. Pray your opponent has buck tens. And then a6 on the right, gonna mix three bet and calls. Just gonna call it this time. Uh, we face a big bet here, uh, not something I see all that often, especially on this kind of texture, but uh, our hand, I think, pretty easy to continue. We improve uh, really cleanly on the ace of the six, we beat all our opponent's bluffs, block some value. Um, this hand's probably a good call on the turn as well for the same reasons, again, I'll block all bluffs, block value, um, improve cleanly. Um, this is really weird to like just bet 
kind of large on the flop and then not overbet this turn. Um, so I'm very suspicious of this. this. I feel like he's bluffing me. Um, it is kind of like the perfect run out. He never has a seven when he takes this line. And Jack eight just had no equity, so check back. And hold. But yeah, so here I'm just calling. Okay, yeah, King Jack. That's fine. <clears throat> when he takes those sizings, um, his value range is actually very narrow. Where like he's only repping hands like Ace Jack, King Jack, maybe Queen Jack. Um, because anything stronger would for sure, I mean, even ace jack, probably not so much because we'll just mainly over better. But I think anything stronger will for sure take like a different line or a different sizing scheme or something. So his value range becomes like, quite narrow on the river. Um, and when I have a hand that is as good as mine in terms of blocking effects, I'm just never going to fold. Uh, King King 10, I think we can just range bet. On the right, kind of four bet kings. Um, 10 6. Could consider raising, but it's kind of like a middling flush draw on a paired board. Um, and also, like the backdoor straight draw we have, like, really improves his range a lot. So, if, I, if the turn is like a king, like, the, if I check raise this flop and like I get this king, obviously, like, I pick up some equity, but his range also improves so often that, you know, it's really not amazing um, to barrel. So, I think I prefer just calling, like, Rather check raise the flop with a hand like King do some clubs or something, at least my flush draw is not it. Um, and that's play, just gonna overbet the river. Easy three bet with the second nuts. Um, don't normally play flats in the small blind, but when face a min raise, um, gonna be in there. Worked out this time. So, I'm just gonna fast play this hand, like. Hand so strong, um, but it doesn't really, like, blocking fives isn't really gonna you know, changes calling range at all, so I'm happy just to kind of fast play. Um, turn is interesting, like I don't really have that much 4x, if any of them thought a small blind. Um, so, I don't know. I'm still gonna overbet, cause like, my range here is gonna be polar. Like I can have hands like 7-6, um, maybe 7-8 of clubs, stuff like that, that just calls cause it's min range. Um, so I'll have clubs. It's a very narrow range, I guess, because I have a few, maybe a hand like ace four, um, five four suited. I guess that's a vote as well. Not many value bets, not many bluffs, very narrow range, but I think that range wants to go big. Uh, eight seven, easy call, blind or blind, pocket threes. Just gonna show down and mostly lose, but I'll bluff with like, all my unpaired stuff, basically. He should for sure have value bet a street at least. Um, this is obviously loose, but he shouldn't really be see betting this board line or all that much because I have so many forex. Um, so it makes me think he's probably just see betting range when he's best one third here. Um, 
So my plan is to float and you know, I can turn some straight draws like this and also can bluff later streets, etc. Could be too loose. Uh, Ace three, gonna check back. And call down on most rivers. So I'll have some river to queen x. I can value bet like king 10 if I didn't raise a flop prior. Um, he bets very large here. So I don't really think king 10 is going to start buffing the turn, so uh, you know, I lose like 10 9, whatever, but and some two pair, but I'm going to fall. <coughs> don't love his play at all, really. So he opens, think that's too loose. Uh, checks flop, which is fine, I suppose. Um, sorry, let me pull it back up. Big bets with no equity, um, seems really bad. And then bluffs for large size with no relevant blockers also seems really bad. Maybe just like thinks population overfolds to that line and so is like card removal isn't relevant. Uh, Jack eight, a bit too weak. Queen ten five, rainbow. I think just good enough to just bet, uh, bet everything here. These rainbow boards are really really good for c betting because um, your opponent has so much less equity when there's no flush draw out there. Um, so you need to be a bit more careful on uh, flush draw boards, but on rainbow boards, um, you have a bit more leeway in terms of your c betting strategy. Um, I am certain about this though. And pretty good turn for us. Pick up equity. Um, my hand is kind of nice to unblock all, all the flopped cutters. Um, and like, you know, bear ace of spade floats, stuff like that. Bear high card floats. So I expect a lot of fold and turn. And then my hand is like, you know, improves cleanly on the deuce and pretty proves fairly cleanly on the ace, um, and then unlocks all the uh, flop floats. Uh, I think now with no spade, just need to give up. I think he should consider folding the turn with 9-8. So if you think about it, the 8 of spades like blocks a lot of my bluffs, like I'm going to barrel with the 8 of spades quite often. And then when he improves on the river, it makes two pairs, so the river is an eight. You know, now I'm gonna cool him every time I have seven six or queen jack that plays this way, and I'm gonna barrel all of those hands like very aggressively. So I think he should fold the turn. Uh, King Queen gonna mix calls and four bets, gonna four bet this time. Didn't work out. Uh, I didn't realize this player had a short stack, so I should have done something else. Probably raised smaller or left or whatever. Um, really don't want to bet and get raised when I have this type of hand. Just too much equity, but there's not a lot. Like the SPR is too low, so he's gonna like raise quite often. Also, this board is like pretty bad for us in general, so lots of checking. Um. Once he checks back, I think I'm gonna start betting. Um, don't think I need to go huge here. Like, I'm obviously not trying to get him to fold the queen, um, but I do want him to fold to nice highs and uh, maybe some like under pairs or they can get him to fold a six or seven by the river. Um, he wasn't having it though. Um, okay, flop a flush. So I'm gonna start by betting really, really small in these types of textures. So like smaller than one third, I think. This is less than quarter pot. So. Just do that. And I don't really see a reason to check, so I'm gonna barrel the turn and just use bigger sizing now. Um, we're obviously quite polar on the turn.
And three is Binders Blind. Easy defend. Call this jam. I, uh. So on the right with pocket threes, eh, I guess I'll call with the spade, but I don't love it. Obviously we can just be drawing dead to ace, kings, ace, king, but ranges are so wide, there's so much junk in his three bet range, blind or spine. Um, probably need to call. And then I have an interesting decision on the river. I think I'm just gonna shove. Like, I lose to his nutted combos, but I get him to fold a lot of better pairs. I don't know, maybe, it's, maybe I should do the smart size. I'm fine. I think I'm okay with this, though. <clears throat> like, he's obviously gonna fold anything worse than an ace. And he'll have a lot of things that beat me that are worse than an ace still. Um, and then, you know, if he has hands like Ace 5 offsuit and stuff, they're in like a pretty grim spot. And I improve on that river like quite a bit. Obviously, I have a lot of flushes. Um, I don't really have pocket tens, but I have queen jack, flushes, and pocket fours. Um, on the right, 3-bet, face 4-bet, always calling, ace, queen, spades. And against a small bet, definitely seeing a turn. Two over cards, backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. So we're a bit deep. We can also consider leading some turns. So if the turn is like a 9, 10, that type of area, we could lead. Um, Flush completes are pretty good for us too, but I don't think this hand. I don't, I'm not really going to build a leading range on this, this type of turn. Um, wasn't paying attention here. I guess I opened and checked. Would have preferred betting on this board, blind blind, but wasn't paying attention. Um, I think now with no equity, I'm just going to delay this hand to the river. Um, I can rep, you know, weak ace x, I can rep king x, I can rep like queens. I'm just going to block and folding. So when I'm doing this, like and now I'm saying I have a king or a decent 10 or pocket queens or pocket jacks. Could maybe even value bet as thin as like a strong nine there. I think one thing to note about that ace king hand is if he has a nutted hand on the flop, like aces, kings, or ace king, he probably doesn't just auto bet one third and probably like picks a smaller, more intentional size. So, kind of like my jam a little more because of that. Um, on the left, I see about one third, turn to 10, just gonna check. Um, and I will not be folding his hand to this guy, no matter what he does. Um, and now I will bet small for value against deuce X, low pocket pairs, ace highs. Obviously you can have three X, but he has enough worse hands in his range. So this type of texture, I usually use half pot or check. Um, if I had an ace king of spades, ace queen of spades, I think I would check um, always. Use those hands kind of as traps. Um, but I think with ace ten of spades, I'm gonna just bet myself I can get him to fold some slightly better um, ace highs like ace jack or whatever on either flop or turn. Um, the queen is interesting, so good for us. 
I wonder if this is, I'm going to do something silly. I think this is a thing pretty often. Maybe not exactly with my combo, um, but basically on these double flush draw turns and through the pots, like you need so much protection as the out of position player because so many rivers are um, so bad for you that um, you end up building a jamming range around like your strongest value hands that need protection. So in that spot, you know, turn queen x or even like pocket jacks, maybe that's a bit too weak, but like turn queen x or like pocket kings with no spade or club, whatever the flush draw, yeah, no spade or club, um, can probably just shove. And then obviously you'll have a bunch of draws that you can shove as well. It might be better for me to do it with turn backdoor draws instead of that hand, but I was feeling spicy. Um, Deuce is going to start with a small bet. And just going to check turn, check call, obviously, because now we have a gutter. Still beat a bunch of random floats. Um, less so on the 10. Now we lose hands like King Jack, King 10. Um, don't really beat anything now, so maybe I'll bluff this in. <clears throat> just targeting 4x, pocket 3s, turn 5x. I'm repping, you know, weak ace x, some river, queen 10. I think he has to call his hand, yeah. It's fine. Pocket checks, easy through that. Uh, in these positions, just calling for a bit. Not really ever jamming jacks. Not the best flop, not the worst. Um, expect to see a lot of small bets. He's probably got a like quarter pot here. There it is. Uh, jacks for the heart, easy continue. Jack spades one time. Um, so if he jams, I have an easy fold. If he bets again on the small size, I have a tough decision. If he checks, I'm just going to check back. Yeah, like this sucks. Uh, eights fold. Um, I will call again, but I really don't love this situation. Obviously, he's going to have ace king, which should probably, so I should do this, like, very high frequency. Um, interesting. <laughs> oh my god, what is this? Okay, if he was bluffing, he would always go all in. Um, so I'm just going to fold, but I don't really understand what he just did. I think he had like kings or aces and then just got scared on the river of the queen, rightfully so. I don't know. My price is so good, but I think he's just like targeting my hand in pocket tens. Uh, could consider blocking that. Yeah, like I said, I, I think if he was bluffing, he would just shove. Um, I think he just has like aces or kings and like doesn't want to put his stack in because my calling range is going to be a lot of queen x and might not call much worth of that, worse at that point. Um, and then he can get a cry and call out of a hand. It's like mine. I don't know. I'm going to look that one up tomorrow. Maybe I'll post it in the comments, but yeah. I think I made a very disciplined fold, but I'm going to be very upset if I see he somehow buffed me for $100 on the river there. I'm the end of the end. That's all, folks.